Hi, Chris. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Chick-fil-A Bowl. It's also been the home of the Texas A&M football team since Christmas Day. Today, instead of practicing inside the Georgia Dome, the Aggies actually went over to Georgia Tech and used the Yellow Jackets indoor facility. The Aggies are excited to be back on the field, and they're getting closer to their big bowl matchup. Winning three straight bowl games is something that has never happened for any Texas A&M football team. That's the stat Coach Sumlin and many of his seniors are hoping to end on New Year's Eve. Another big motivation for this team is playing on New Year's Eve in front of a national television audience. This will be the only game being shown on TV, and the Aggies are hoping to put on a show. Uh, they have an opportunity to do something that, that no one's ever done at Texas A&M, and, and that is to win three consecutive bowl games in three consecutive years. And uh, you think about how long we've played football and, and how many great players have been here, how many great teams have been here, for them to, to, to have that as a goal to walk away. Uh, like our senior group last year was one of four teams to ever win 11 games. These guys got an opportunity to set, set another bar. And uh, regardless of what happened this year, I think that's important to them because that's something that no one can ever take away from. But most importantly, finish out our uh, collegiate career with the, in, the, in the win column, you know? And uh, it's like uh, Coach Summon said, you know, playing in a slot where <clears throat> no one else is playing, you know, uh, all eyes are going to be on us and on this university, and we're just looking forward to uh, representing this university well. Now the Aggies kind of come into this bowl matchup limping a little bit. They lost the last two games of the season. Obviously things weren't clicking quite as well as they were early on. Now Johnny Manziel also struggled in those last two games. It's something Coach Sumlin talked about today. For the first time since that final game, Coach Sumlin actually gave us an indication of what was actually wrong with Johnny football. Sumlin says Manziel hit a finger on a helmet, causing some discomfort, and his teammates say Manziel looks ready to go just like every other game. He's the same Johnny Manziel as two years ago competing for the uh, starting quarterback uh, job. Uh, you know, he's a, <clears throat> you know he, he's, he's a workhorse. Uh, he, he approaches every day um, like he wants to get better. And I haven't seen anything different from him, you know, um, approaching this ball game. Hitting a, hitting a helmet is uh, something that uh, um, it's hard on your throwing hand. And, uh, you know, he, he, he battled through it. And, and uh, obviously the time off that, that uh, you know, we haven't played in a month. And, you know, giving him a chance to heal up, I think uh, he, he feels really, really good right now. Now, maybe the biggest change for the Aggies heading into this bowl game against Duke is the guy who will be sending those play calls to Johnny Manziel. Jake Spavadol was promoted to offensive coordinator. He will be on the field making the play calls, something he did not do completely all by himself during the regular season. Coach Sumlin said making a move like this is never easy, but he made sure to move Spavadol into that play calling role before the team actually began its bowl preparation. So far, Sumlin says Spavadol is dealing with the move very well, and the players seem to like it too. The uh, transition period wasn't hard at all. You know, he's a very um, easy guy to uh, respond to. You know, you know when it, but when you. <clears throat> thinking about the offensive schemes and stuff like that, you know, uh, it's going to be on full display New Year's Eve. So, you know, you guys don't have anything to worry about. Now, change is not only happening on the offensive side of the ball, it's happening on the defensive side as well. Most notably, the team will have to fill a very big void left by Darian Claiborne, who was arrested on drug possession charges and did not travel to Atlanta with the team. Claiborne was named to the all SEC freshman team. He led the team in tackles this season. It's a big blow for the Aggie defense, but also an opportunity for someone else to step up. For us on defense, it's just the next man up. Um, all year long, you know, we've been having um, some, some injuries and, you know, different things that have taken our defense, you know, and uh, we have younger guys that are ready to step up. I'm sure um, our younger linebacker, Mastro, will be ready to play. Um, Donnie Baggs also will be ready to play. Um, we have a bunch of young guys that are ready to, you know, make a name for themselves. And um, they've, they've been working hard this year, you know, to. Um, to make to make a make plays for us, and, but our defensive coordinator, Coach Snyder, he'll definitely have our linebackers, you know, ready for this game. Now, obviously, the Aggies' main priority here in Atlanta is to get ready for its big bowl game. 
But you know what? They can't spend every minute of every day on the practice field getting ready for this matchup. So Coach Sumlin actually asked the guys how many of them had ever been to Atlanta. Only a handful raised their hands. We now throw it over to Chris Costa, who talks about what the Aggies are doing in their off time away from the practice field. Thanks, Luke. Well, it hasn't been all work and no play for the Aggies since they arrived here in Atlanta. The Ags and the Blue Devils have been competing all week in what they call the Battle for Bowl Week. Now, they've been doing everything from making milkshakes in the milkshake combine to playing each other at Xbox in Madden 25. And the players say that these types of activities are bringing out a different competitive edge in their teammates. It was the first time that, you know, us and Duke were actually, you know, in the same room. And uh, while everything was, you know, real, really friendly with those competitions, you can tell that, you know, uh, both, both teams were still competing. You know, and, and while it's all fun and games, uh, <clears throat> by adding a competition um, element to it, you know, it kind of made it more fun. You know, and, and it, it was a really great experience, you know, especially, and I'm really happy that Cedric Boy he actually came with the, came out with the win because if he would have lost, it would have been a bad week for him. I feel like uh, for sure the, you know, last night actually getting to see those guys up close and personal, you know, and um, just competing, you know, all of us on our team are great competitors. Last night that was big for us. Uh, we want to win the competition this week and we want to come away with the win in the game. And, um, you know, I feel like last night was a great experience to start off this, uh, the competition. Now the Aggies still have a couple of fun activities planned, including go-karting, a Guitar Hero competition, and the game show style football feud. And the winner of all these activities takes home the Battle for Bowl Week title belt, the second most valuable piece of hardware here at the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Luke, back to you. Thanks, Chris. Now let's talk about the team that the Aggies will be facing in this Chick-fil-A Bowl. The Duke Blue Devils have won 10 games this season. They're having a great year. Now for the second game in a row, they are going to have to face a Heisman winner. A lot of Duke's attention is on Johnny Manziel in this matchup, but the team is also ready to take another big step in program history. There was a time that the Blue Devils were just happy to be bowl eligible, but now that they've been in this bowl situation before, they're actually ready to prove they can win the big game. We all know the taste that was left in our mouth a year ago. I can promise you these guys do. I haven't lost it yet. So um, it's extremely important that we prepare well and play well. And then the chips are going to fall where they are, but we're not going to leave anything out there if we can certainly help it. After hearing from both teams today, you can tell they are eager to try and finish this year with a win. Now coming up later in the show, we're going to talk to Gary Stoken, the president and CEO of the Chick-fil-A Bowl. He'll tell us what he thinks of having the Aggies and the Blue Devils right here in Atlanta. Right now, we'll throw it back to Chris in the studio.